Have you ever felt the struggle of speaking and overcoming that fear of speaking? And then on top of that, you add ADHD to the mix. Well, in today's episode, we are going to be covering how to overcome that fear and ADHD to have a clear and concise message. What's going on, guys? This is Philip Sessions, your speaking and communication strategist. I've got Lori Jewett here. She is the youth leader and social media and event coordinator at Big Jackson Church, soon to be author, podcast host of All About the Benefits, and she actually co-hosts another podcast, which is really exciting. She's a wife, a mom, an avid learner, and an ADHD speaker. I think it's going to be a new title for you, but you have many titles, but you just live out all of this, and I'm excited to have you on the podcast today, Lori. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, well, first, thank you for having me. I am a I'm sure we'll talk about imposter syndrome a little bit, but I'm not going to lie. When I got that message, I'm like, whoo, it, it, it peaked its ugly head there for a second. But yeah, so thank you for having me. Super excited to be here. Um, so like Philip said, I am super ADHD and you don't even have to know that to hear all of the things that I do. And you're like, oh yeah, that girl needs some meds. <laughs> but yeah, we got so, Jesus at least. Yes. <laughs> um, so I'm a little prayer before this. So we're going to be good. Um, please God, let me stay on track and not wiggle around too much. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'm Lori. I, um, do a lot of things. Um, I know we're going to dig a little bit more into it, but up until September 28th, my husband and I owned an insurance agency together for 17 years. I was really involved in it for 14 years and then everything changed. Um, kind of, we, we've all had those changes that just come up out of nowhere and, and smack us, but it wound up being the best thing that's ever happened to me. So I'm kind of transitioning from that, you know, leadership, owning an agency to speaking. And the podcasting was a really good um, segue there, right? Because it's like you start the podcasting and I don't air mine in video. So I can like wiggle around and be crazy on, on mine. And it's that like it gave me that it bridged the gap to getting on the stages. And now I'm starting to get on the stages and um you know i've got two podcasts like you said um working with the church i get on stage at church every sunday and i am getting so much better at my uh my speaking i love the way you put it philip on facebook the other day that i went from nascar to usain bolt (laughs) i have to know though what's the next step what what what's my next goal that i need to get to in speed Oh man, I, I I don't know. I, we got to come up think good. about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to think about what that is. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely a, a big drop from NASCAR to Usain Bolt. I would say, oh, maybe maybe a marathon runner. I don't know. We'll go with that. Oh, and now you're now you're going the distance. You get a little <laughs> bit more distance on you because you get more comfortable with that speaking, so you can go a little bit longer. Uh, and you're, I guess, you're a little bit more long-winded versus you're just quick and you say it all and you're done in two minutes. <laughs> and you have people just staring at you. What did I just hear? I don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you got a lot of value in that two minutes that could have been stretched into twenty, but you're welcome. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you got to pack it in, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So let's let's go into our first question here. How did you? start getting over that fear of public speaking because I know this is something we've talked about a lot of times on coaching calls and everything but what makes you still step out even when you have that fear of public speaking so I'm going to back up I forgot something on my intro that is really important to this question so in high school um, I was exempted from speech class because every time I got up in front of the classroom I threw up and we Mm. were in one of those like you know, when the, when the school grows too much and they have those like trailers, yeah, there's really no way to, for me to get to a bathroom. So they got sick of me running to the door and like getting <laughs> sick. So the, the speech teacher was like, nope, you're good. Yeah. You don't have to do them anymore. <laughs> wow. And then I think I posted it on Facebook a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, but my mom sent me my college transcript and I failed public speaking in college. Wow. Um. So yeah, I think that's kind of important to the whole, the whole thing that coming full circle is I literally could not get up in front of a group of people. Um, there's there's not just one thing I think that got me over that fear and that gets me over that fear every day because I'm not going to lie. And I know you and I have talked about this. Every Sunday I still get imposter syndrome and I start second guessing it and um, 
and things like that. But one, getting coaches. And I've got you guys, and this is not just a plug for Philip, but I have a mindset coach. I have a vision coach. I have a speaking coach. And all of that works really well together. It helps that all of my coaches know each other and are friends. But <laughs> so yeah. I know we're kind of all on the same page there. But, you know, getting over, so I've, I've worked with my mindset coach to get over the subconscious fear of, um, of that. And I have a, a, an anchor, a, oh, you do air. I was going to say, you guys can't see it because I'm used to mine only being audio, but I have an anchor that before I go up on stage, and if you watch really close on the church recordings, you'll see me kind of touch my collarbone a little bit. And that's my power anchor. It's like, okay, you got this. And it gives me a calming sense. And then I work really hard to remember um, the things that you say to calm me down, because you're really good at knowing how to, to communicate and calm, calm me down. But I think the biggest part is now I have a message that I know is important and I know people need to hear. Mm. And that just pushes me over the edge of fear because I'm like, okay, God is using me. Now I realize that to get my message out. Even if I don't think anybody understands my message, which the first couple of times I'm like, oh my gosh, these people are not going to understand me. And I just rolled with it. I talked about God lattes and it's turning into a book. Nice. So <laughs> my, my, like, I think that, I think that's the week I sent you. That was like, it was like one minute and 59 seconds. And in my head, it sounded so stupid, but I got so much feedback afterwards. Another public speaker that goes to our church. She's amazing. Um, she, <laughs> came up to me and she said, I'm stealing your God lattes thing. <laughs> and I'm like, please do. Cause it, it, apparently it's good. Yeah, no, it's, it's very relatable though. Even though yeah. you didn't realize it, that's very relatable because so many people, and I see it here in the small town I'm in. So they built a Starbucks inside of the local grocery store and it just has so many people in there. And there's not a lot, most people that have good jobs actually go outside of our town to go there. So there's a lot, it's a, poor town if you will it's mm -hmm. a country town so people don't have a lot of money or maybe i'm kind of speculating that or putting that out there that they don't but now they're building another starbucks you know people really love their lattes and so if we can turn that into the god latte so the same thing that we're constantly like no matter what we have to have a little bit of god every day i think that's mm -hmm. such a great thing so it's a very great analogy well, and i want to go that. Yeah, exactly. I want to go back real quick. You mentioned something about you had all these coaches that you've obviously paid into you and they poured into you and everything and you've gained all of this knowledge, but that still didn't get you over that edge. A lot of people feel like they can learn and eventually become whatever they want to be or be able to obtain whatever they want just from learning. But you realize that it wasn't just the learning alone. You actually had to force yourself over and so really finding that why is such an important thing and just so so much there we could just really dive into but i want you to dive a little bit more into that that why and how that why helped you really get over that edge yeah so i think i started really getting into the speaking a couple months before the agency ended because i wanted to i knew i wanted more i didn't know why mm -hmm. i mean we're, we're part of a mastermind together that part of it is you write a book, you start a podcast. I'm like, all right, I guess I got to get better at this, right? But there was no purpose other than because they say so. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's part of building your machine. You just do it. And in the beginning, it's funny. People ask, you know, why, why did you start a podcast? And I literally was like, because I'm supposed to. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And if you listen to my first like 10 episodes, you'll, you'll, you get that vibe because it was like, I was nervous and I didn't have a purpose behind it. And then as everything started changing and evolving, I realized, and this is, this is something that my, like what apparently according to you and some other people that I truly look up to my speech, I gave a week ago, a week ago today, like exactly in, in an hour from now. But what I talked about in that is all of those little things, all of the bad things, all the good things led me to where I need to be. They all taught me lessons. I started a pod. I now realize I started a podcast because God was getting me ready to use me and use my speaking skills. I truly believe that now mm. that like, even though I had no idea at the time, oh, I don't know, I'm just supposed to get better at speaking. It's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as far as like 
you know, finding that purpose and understanding it, even, even whenever I was still, you know, I'm still doing the insurance thing on the side. I, my clients are spoiled. Sorry to anybody that is still with the company. I don't trust anybody else to take care of my clients the way that I do. I mean, I, I have clients that like email me every holiday. I get an email yesterday for St. Patrick's Day because I have a client that loves me and he just wanted, he tells me every holiday, even Groundhog Day. But so that, that was my, that was my purpose, right? But when I would get up in front of people and talk about insurance, it was just the same all there, you know, it was just talking because there was no purpose. But now that I know my purpose, it's like, okay, I got to do this because it's what I'm supposed to do. And that just helps me jump over that, that little bit of fear, because I know that my purpose is bigger. Insurance is important and important, right? Like, obviously we're all going to, you know, pass away, unfortunately, sorry for the newsflash, but it happens. So insurance is important, but people's salvation and relationship with God, like there is nothing, in my opinion, there is nothing more important than that. So having that and and it can be whatever it is for you. It doesn't have to be related to religion or your spirituality. It can be your mission is to help people get on stage and get their message out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's incredibly important because you're in your case, you're helping people. You're helping me get up there and talk about God lattes. Cause I wouldn't have been able to do that six months ago. Oh my God. I would have thrown up on stage. It would have been awful. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny you bring that up because that's actually the reason why I got into the speaking coaching because I had started with fitness coaching and then realized, okay, I can impact a person. I can impact a family perhaps. And of course that could go out and be more people. You never know what that person could do. But in my mind, I couldn't figure out exactly how that would scale versus the speaking. I knew I could get that to scale because exactly to your point, I helped you get over that fear of public speaking and armed you with some knowledge to help you be able to speak better. And now you are speaking God into other people. And it doesn't necessarily have to be God, but it could be things about business or whatever. And that's yeah. what I want to be able to help people with because I can only impact so many people. I'm only one person. I only have so much time. But if I can teach 10 people how to speak better, they can go reach out to another 10 people. And that just scales exponentially. I love that you brought that up because that is literally the reason why I changed to this and and of course, we can think here like, well, you know, my purpose right now, at least, is not necessarily God focused with the helping people speak portion. Yes, God is an important part of my life. And now you are focused on helping people reach God and everything with your speeches. And so I could say, well, maybe my purpose isn't where it should be because ultimately it should be on God. I'm I'm just throwing this out here. I don't I don't think yeah. that at all, but I know some people are probably thinking that right Absolutely. now. But here's the thing: you have to use your ability, your God given ability, to be able to help out somewhere because you are going to be able to help the person that's going to do that thing. And I always go back to this example of Martin Luther King, as he's a an example of somebody who stood up for what was right and stood against what was wrong. Was it a God thing? No, but he was helping people out. And I, I, I always think about that person that helped Martin Luther King be the person he was. They may have not been able to do that or it wasn't the right time, but because they put the, they instilled the values into him he was able to stand up for the thing that was right and look at where we're at today. Yes, we're not perfect here specifically in the United States, but we are way better than we were when he was around marching and leading those groups. So the things that you do and arm yourself with are so important and having that purpose is so important to help you step out to be able to speak or just to step out and do the thing that's right, whatever it may be. So I love that you've really stepped in that purpose and really doing that thing that you're really passionate about. I think it's so important and helps us be able to really step past that fear of public speaking. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you know, God related. I'm just going to throw out a super quick example is, you know, my, you know, my husband, Dean, he is, I mean, this was kind of thrown on us, this huge change, right? For me, mm -hmm. it took me literally 30 days to step in from being an insurance leader to like all in on God, like all in, use me, whatever you need me. He is kind of finding his way. And for his, he's using his and he's doing it for free right now because he's, you know, building that network. But you've got all these people coming into the crypto and the NFT world, you know, straight out mm -hmm. of school, straight out of high school. They know the techie stuff, but they do not know business. And so he started pouring into these people 
on, hey, your customer service sucks. You're, the way you're handling this sucks. And it is snowballing into them, these people learning and getting better and helping other people. So it doesn't have to be God focused, like you said. Uh-huh. It can be whatever it is you know. Get out there, talk to people, you know, put put your message out there. And this is gonna sound so cliche, but your message, your message. And you have no idea the people that you are doing a disservice to because you aren't working on, and because this is, you know, a speaking podcast. Because you aren't working on your speaking skills to get your message out there. Imagine if I would have hired you, you know, a year ago. And maybe I would have been led there because I was already leading the direction of going in a, a lead, going down the trail of going another direction before my hand was forced. Mm-hmm. But imagine the the people that could have been impacted in that time frame. How many people could have you know heard my message had I gotten into it sooner so it is so incredibly important whatever your message is learn to articulate learn to slow down to Usain Bolt or however you say his name speed (laughs) um and you know get the message out there and this is kind of off track but I want to tell this story really quick because I didn't realize how important it was um a couple like three or four weeks ago this guy came up to me super sweet I'm not going to say his age because I don't want him to hear this and be like, wow, she thinks I'm that old. <laughs> but I don't really know. But he's a, a, an older gentleman, super sweet. And he just came up to me. We were talking. And he said, you know, Lori, I, I know what it, what you're saying up there on Sundays is super, you know, I know what you're saying is great because everybody's laughing and smiling. I just wish that I could hear you because you talk so fast and my I can't. You know, I can't hear you when you talk, when you speak that quickly. And the way that that man framed it, took it from, there's other people that come up and they're like, you talk so fast, I can't hear you. I didn't even realize it until another friend of ours um, brought it to my attention. He said, Lori, that needs to be a part of your speech because that man gave you a gift. Rather than tell you, you're speaking so fast. He said, hey, you're making an impact and your impact could be even greater if more people could hear you because you slowed down. And that is one of the things, realizing that is one of the things that got me to, you know, away from NASCAR speed. Well, let me rephrase that. That's one of the things that encouraged me to ask you and other people for help on working on that speed because I knew that I was making an impact, but to hear it from someone else that like, hey, you, if you could just slow down just a little bit, and this isn't a man that's in public speaking or anything like that. I, I think he, I don't know what he did, but he retired from like construction or something like that. But that, that got through to me, I think mm. it, the, the impact thing to get your message out, whatever it is. So yeah, I love it. I love it. And I want to transition here a little bit over to the ADH, ADHD side of things. It's a good it's, transition point. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, as, as those of you watching the video here, you'll see that Lori has a pink background with a black foam panel on one side. And she's got or or not orange. She's got fuzzy cowhide looking stuff or it's whatever. Dalmatian. Thank Dalmatian. you. I, right, I like the right. bill I, when I, I come in this room. There. It's a, yes, it's spotted <laughs> black and white there. Dalmatian pattern fuzziness <laughs> to help her with her ADHD when she's in the podcast studio. But I want to focus on what you shared the other day in the group about how you have learned to slow down because it's not something that I could have necessarily known because I haven't done tons of studies on ADHD speakers or anything. But I thought it was very interesting and a very very creative way for you to learn how to slow down and have that confidence in your speaking. Of course, I made a little bit of fun of you because some of the old people at my church, they'll do that with their sermons where they'll have it all in big font and everything. I know I'm giving some of this away, but tell us about how you were able to help yourself slow down with what you do and how you're prepared there on that stage. I wish I would have my binder in here to show you guys because it, it it was funny, but it worked for me. So I printed, I, there's a lot of people and you'll see, I have my stick, my like, um, what are the index cards? And I was uh, trying to figure out my way because what works for Philip may not work for me. What works for me would absolutely not work for Philip. Cause he would be like, what in the heck? Why do I have a piece of fabric in my hand on stage? But so what I did is I printed out and this is where I, I tell you, you guys, if you have doubt, hire the coach. Cause all of this is a cu- culmination of what I learned from three different people. 
Um, so I printed it out and it's super big. I think I did like size 18 or 20 font, double spaced. And anywhere that I thought that needed a, actually four people, because Dean helped me a lot too. Everywhere that I um, thought that I needed like to take a breath, because if you guys can tell, I think I've taken like three breaths this whole time because I get excited <laughs> and I don't breathe. So the the impact points, I put like extra spaces because I know how my brain works. And I would like literally be forced to skip to like flip a page or like move my eyes down the page. And so it was super big print, but also a lot of spaces and impactful points. There were certain spots that I had highlighted for it to change my Dean's like, you know, we've, my husband's been through like the Jordan Bell for training and he talks a lot about tonality. So Dean said, okay, you need to like work on your tonality because one that slows you down. And two, it tells people like what they need to listen to. Right. And like, well, obviously they need to listen to the whole thing, but you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I did, I did that and I put it in um, plastic sheets in a binder, like a small binder, but it was like the little, you know, little bitty ones. And the reason I put it in the plastic sheets is because a friend of mine told me, he said, what you don't want to do is have 30 pages of your speech and then drop them because they're never going to fall in the right order. They're going to go everywhere. So if you put them in the binder and as much as I move around, every single time I practice, I dropped the binder. Mm. I did not on stage though. And I'm pretty sure I even like stopped and was like, oh, I didn't drop the binder. <laughs> <laughs> but so that was part of it. Um, another part of it is I have my, like my spirit animal that I was in my podcast room one day on a, just a, a friendly call with a friend of mine. And he was laughing at me cause I don't think it's in here right now, but I have this like, um, cloud dough. It was the, it was mm -hmm. the, in the swag bags from million dollar mastermind. And I, I play with it and I realized I got it in my hair. So I'm sitting here doing this and I'm like picking it out of the wall. There's still a piece of it in the wall here, my fuzzy wall. And I'm doing that. And he just started laughing. And I said, don't mind me. I'm channeling my inner orangutan. And so then he came up with the orangutan. And he has like this whole backstory of, so I printed out the, the picture of the orangutan. And I put that in the front of the binder to remind me I am strong. I can plow through anything and I can do this. And then I also had a little small piece of this fabric. So if you guys can see, it's that like, I think it's called like minky or something, but it has like the little dots that are textured. Mm. and every time I practiced, I had a piece of this in my hand that I just played with. When I went on stage, I didn't need it, but I had it tucked in my binder in case I did need it, in case I, like, caught myself panicking, and that's what works for me. I think that, I think that's the important thing, and, you know, the conversation on Facebook that you're referring to, you asked, like, for people to give advice, and that's my advice is, yes, take, take all of the coaching, well, not all the coaching, all of the good coaching, <laughs> cause I, cause I've had some people give me bad advice, but yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I made the mistake a couple of weeks ago of asking everybody and their brother for advice right before I went on stage and I went up there and it all hit my head at the same time. I didn't, I, I didn't say anything that I was going to, but I know myself, I know that I'm super ADHD. I'm never, I don't think I'm ever going to be the person that can stand still and not dance on stage. If you, if yeah. you look at the live video or live pictures, you know, on, on my, on the iPhone that were taken when I was up there and you move the thing trying to through the, it is hilarious. Cause when you're watching the video, you can't really tell as much, but when you see a little chunk of it, I was like dancing <laughs> I, and I'm going to work on that, but I don't think it'll yeah. ever go away and I don't want it to ever go away. That's me. Right. Like. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that, that that's you. And too many of us worry about if I don't do this right, if I'm not the best speaker out there, that everybody's going to judge me. And there's going to be people that judge you no matter what. You could be the best speaker out there and people will still judge you. So just forget about that. But secondly, yes, step into who you are, which I think it's really cool that you do that, Laura. You exemplify that and just be who you are. At the end of the day, you don't really care. I mean, I know you care in some extents, but at the end of the day, you don't care because you're focused on your purpose and you're focused on helping people with your message. And so mm -hmm. if you don't say everything great or if you're dancing around on stage, you just play into it. And I really have been enjoying watching you progressively get better, but still being a lot of yourself and even going up there and kind of making fun of yourself here or there, or you'll be like, just like you said, Oh, I didn't drop the binder. You're just say that. 
which really goes into your ADHD. And I know you're not the ADHD expert, but clearly you know more about it than I do. So really, yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really want to keep diving into this and, and really that aspect of this fear that people are going to judge me because you have these things up there. Of course, people can't see your notes with the highlights and the extra spaces and the huge font and the orangutan on the paper or anything like that. But say the, the piece of fabric you had or you dancing around, those are things that people may end up seeing. And I, so I want you to speak to that, to this ADHD person that has this fear of speaking or this fear of just getting in front of one or two people and having this ADHD moment. They feel like they need to be the quote unquote normal person. So I want you to speak into them real quick and just give them some advice about being yourself and letting that ADHD be what it is. Yeah. So I think, I think I have to dive into like a little backstory of what we deal with, right? Attention, attention deficit, hyperactive disorder. Just, it's not a disorder. We're raised and I wasn't diagnosed till I was an adult. When, when my book comes out July 1st, I got to give my little plug too, but there's, there's an entire chapter in there about like all of the misdiagnoses. And I've run into so many people since I started talking about it. A client yesterday was telling me that his wife literally exact same thing. She was put on the exact same wrong meds as me because mm. I was diagnosed with all sorts of stuff when in all reality, it was just ADHD. And yeah. it's not a disorder. You, I mean, they can call it, doctors can say whatever they want, but it's what makes me me. I've yeah. gotten, since I started embracing that and realizing I don't have to hide that part of me. When I first got into business, oh my goodness, Philip. I was trying so hard to be like, and you know how hard it is right now? I'm trying to stand to sit still just to say this <laughs> sentence. And I'm like, physical pain, my hands are shaking, not because of nerves, but because I need to move. <laughs> um, and I, because that's what you hear, right? Is they want us, to, they, whoever they is, want us to be like everybody else. Yeah. We're not. We, our brain, my brain works, roll, goes so quickly. And when I started learning to embrace that and be myself, like, oh my gosh, like who does this with the podcast studio and the bubbles and pets a wall when they get, you know, <laughs> me, I do. Well, and Russell Brand and uh, Jonah Hill and the movie Get Him to the Greek, totally the inspiration for this. But <laughs> um, anyways, back on track, Lori. Oh yeah, we're talking about ADHD. So <laughs> realizing that there again, it, it's about having your purpose, right? Because with, you know, my God's using me to speak on stage, but also I'm being used to encourage people that have ADHD to keep being themselves and not try and hide that because we're taught to tone down, right? Like mm -hmm. we, I had it in like third or fourth grade. I had a teacher that would literally at the time, my, my initials were LC and she would literally smack me in the head with a pencil and tell everybody in the class that, um, it was hollow in my head. And she called wow. me Elsie and she was like, you know, and so it evolved into like Elsie is what everybody started calling me. And it was not a good thing. It was because they thought I was dumb because I couldn't focus on everything. And I got good grades up until high school, <laughs> but it was because my brain didn't work like everybody else's in the classroom. Yeah. I, my, I want to impact kids, adults, whoever, parents, I want parents to understand, don't try and put your kids in a box. Nothing against, I love my parents to death, but at the time, now ironically, I think both my parents are diagnosed, but at the time, my mom was a sixth grade teacher. So it was like ADHD isn't a thing. They just medicate kids because then that's what she believed at the time. And I can't fault her for that. She did the best she could with the knowledge mm -hmm. she had at the time. But now I want people to, to get out of that and realize that you can get on stage or do a podcast and be yourself, whether it's ADHD or um, autism. I, I had somebody reach out to me recently and I don't know what his neurodivergence is, but because I didn't ask, but he reached out to me asking for advice on how I am myself on podcasts and on stage and things like that. And that just blew my mind. I'm like, are you kidding me? People are reaching out to me as like the, I'm not going to say expert. I'm using air quotes, almost <laughs> expert, I guess, because I'm just putting myself out there and owning it. And that's the title of my book is ADHD, 80HD, because our brains go 80 miles an hour. And it's okay to embrace that and be yourself. The laughs I get at church are normally because I forget what I'm saying. And I like 
like the God lattes thing. I don't really know. I think I kind of maybe had something like that written down, but I think it just came to me. And had I not gone through all the coaching of learning to be myself and, you know, talking with you and I'm not saying get up there and be crazy because you have to rein it in. That's why I have my coaches. That's why I have Philip because he teaches me how to be myself, but also rein it in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to get up there and like try and do cartwheels mainly because I can't really do a cartwheel anymore, but I, I think what people really need to understand is it is okay to be yourself. You don't, yeah. I, I, I'm never, like I said earlier, I'm never going to speak like you. I would love to, because I think you're a very eloquent speaker, but I can't ever see myself doing that. I can't sit still long enough for a 40 minute podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that really how you went about all of that. And I know it seemed kind of crazy all this way, but you still kind of brought it back home at the end of the day, which I think is a very important thing that anybody, not just ADHD people, but everybody needs to understand is that you have to have an end goal in mind when it comes to what you're speaking on. And in this case, you were answering a question. So even though you kind of went all around and I'm sure all the ADHD people here were able to follow along with that. And I was able to follow along as well. I thought there were some great points that you brought in with that, (laughs) but you still were able to bring it back to the end goal, which is such an important thing. And is that message that you share and the way that you share your message will be able to impact people differently than it will be the way I share it. And we can share that same exact message. So just be that messenger because people need to hear it in a different way. And I can't help thinking about, um, what's it? I think Philip and the eunuch. Yeah. Philip and the eunuch. Or no, not Philip and the eunuch. Um, I can't remember. There's a story in the Bible now. Actually, I think it is him. But anyways, where they go and the one man sees another man with the Bible and he's like, you know, he's reading the Bible and I really think it is Philip. And he asks him, hey, how do you, he's like, do you understand what you're reading? He says, no, how am I going to understand it without a teacher or something like that? And then so Philip starts explaining it to him. And I'm just going to use Philip. I hopefully, hopefully I have the right person here. And then, and then basically he teaches him and then it's like, oh man. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, what, what my, what my, we need to find water so I can be baptized and all this stuff. But basically he had a message from the Bible. He was trying to read the Bible and didn't understand it. And somebody came by and basically told him what it was saying. So he said, had the same exact message, but he shared it in a way that he could understand. And that's the same way with us as speakers. One speaker will share a message and another speaker speaker will share the same message, but it could have two completely different meanings or you only understand the one. So don't be afraid, no matter where you're at, however much ADHD you have or not, that your message needs to be shared. And the way that you share it, you need to share it how you would share it, not how somebody else would share it. I the, the key to that whole thing, though, and I'm super glad you brought that up, is the end goal. Yeah. Right. And those of you that can relate to the way my brain works, the whole time I was just rambling, I'm like in my head, I'm like, okay, get back on track, get back on track. And I had the the question rolling around in my head the whole time to make sure that I got back. There are times still, I was going to say there was a time, there's still times that I totally like forget and then like two hours later, I'll be like, oh my gosh, I never actually answered that question. I do it on my podcast all the time. Yeah. But it is important. Like, you know, you, you told me earlier something that you ask on every episode and I know, cause I listen to your show. So I wrote it down. So it's literally in front of me the whole time. So I make sure that whenever we get to that, I don't get super off track. So I think it's incredibly important. Yes. Be yourself 100% because there's somebody out there. If it's, if there's one person that you impact, um, then you, you know you've that was my goal with my book right of impacting one person and somebody said it may have been you I don't remember who it was that said it but they said you already impacted one person and it was me I impacted myself by trying to get my message about ADHD and all that out there but on top of that there's a young lady who's 19 years old that because her dad let her read my intro she started a podcast on ADHD geared, geared towards teenagers and their parents oh wow so put your message out there Like 100%, but have that end goal. So you can always like, at least most of the time, come back to the point. So it's not just like all over the place. Exactly. Because a confused mind is one that will never understand. We always think, I think the quote's really a confused mind never buys, but a confused mind won't understand you either. So make sure you do get back on track with that message. 
But Lori, let's, let's go ahead and go to that last question. And that's, that's ironically where I was going to transition us to <laughs> here next. And so I want to hear what that one message is. If you only had one message you could share for the rest of your life, what would that message be? I've been thinking about it the whole time and I still am like, oh, which one do I want to go with? So <laughs> I'm going to go with do whatever you need to do to get rid of your distractions to find what your purpose is. If you believe in God, fantastic. Your divine purpose. If you don't, you still have a purpose. I believe that. I believe that you have a divine purpose, but that's just me. Um, but for me, there were so many distractions that I couldn't see that purpose because I had so many things going on. And I mean, my brain by design is a giant distraction. So, you know, whatever you need to do, get rid of some of the distractions, even if it's just for, you know, an hour a day or a weekend and dig into what your true purpose is, especially if you feel like you're stuck in something. I felt like I was stuck. I truly did. I felt so stuck because I wasn't happy anymore with what I was doing. And it took the distractions. My distractions were forced away. Thank God. But it took those distractions going away for me to find my true purpose. So I think that would be my message that mm -hmm. that I want everybody to hear is get rid of the distractions so you can find what your true path is. Yeah, I, I love that. And I know we could go on and talk about that some more here for sure, but I, I'm going to go ahead and close this out here. But yeah, get rid of those distractions, no matter what it is. And I actually started doing this was well, kind of multi-purposed. It was very interesting. So I'll be on my phone and I would get the banner at the top. And sometimes I'd try to click on something that I was already working on. And then now I get a message and I have to go, oh, well, I don't want to forget the message and I got to respond to this and try and come back. So I got rid of that banner notification for everything so I wouldn't have that pop up so I could stay focused. And that's a minor thing. That's but, a really good idea, though. Yeah. And it is kind of a weird feeling to me because I'm like, oh, I heard my text go off, but I didn't see the banner. So I don't know who it is. But it does help me actually stay on track with what I'm working on. It's a minor distraction to fix, I guess, but it still is kind of nice. But definitely work on getting rid of those distractions to help you get to that true purpose. I love that message. And, and Lori, I appreciate you so much for coming on and sharing this message and giving us some insight as you as an experienced, I think it's a better word, experienced ADHD person, since you're not quite the expert yet, that you're going to be there. As this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. And Lori, if people want to get to know you more, if they want to be able to follow you, where's the best place for them to go? Um, honestly, right now, Facebook, Lori Jewett. That's I, I'm where my I I have the domain of my name dot com, but I haven't set it up yet. Okay. No well, hey, as long as long oh, as you yeah. got it where nobody else can get it, that's the most important thing. I think that's how mine is as well. <laughs> Yeah. So Facebook is Facebook's the best way. Yeah. Lori Jewett on Facebook. Yeah. Awesome. Well, once again, Lori, thank you so much for coming on. For those of you that are listening to the podcast or watching it on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe, leave a comment over on YouTube and leave a review there on the podcast so we can continue to grow this message and be able to help more people out. Awesome. Thank you for having me.